It's finally time to talk about it. Why Super Smash Bros. Ultimate might end with Fighter Pass number two. Let's talk about it. What's happening, my block buddies, and welcome to a brand new episode of Blocked Content's League Speak. My name is Callum, and this is going to be your content for today. Today, I actually wanted to break it all down and talk to you guys about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's Fighters Pass number two, and why we here at Blocked Content think that it might be the end of Super Smash Bros. as we know it. Kind of like the end of an era, not necessarily the end of the franchise per se, but this might actually be a huge bookend to what we've known as the Sakurai verse, right? If you think about it, it is very unlikely that after Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Sakurai will stay on as the director for Super Smash Bros. It really feels like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the ultimate possible game in the series. With all of these third party characters, with Sakurai pulling out all the stops to create this perfect game, and of course, everything perfectly coming together, even as far as saying, you know, everyone is here. That first trailer just took everyone by complete surprise. Now, what is incredible to me is how well Sakurai has put it all together, right? Sakurai really worked very hard to keep the fans' love and fans' expectation also, really, and meet those expectations. With Super Smash Bros. Ultimate specifically, it really feels like Sakurai is actually not even meeting the fans halfway, but he's doing everything in his power to actually make us happy in terms of adding different modes and play styles that are, you know, geared towards tournament players, to even adding characters that he previously said were just impossible and that he would never do, right? Ridley being too big, and of course characters like King K. Rool not even being, you know, in the public eye anymore, and it truly feels like, for me, this could be it, right? This could be the final game that Masahiro Sakurai himself directs. And of course, I've been answering many of you guys' questions about Smash Ultimate and new fighters in our show Question Block, where I answer your questions. What do I think of your favorite game? How do you start making YouTube content? Whatever you can think of, send your question through to blockedcontentmail at gmail.com, and I will answer your question live on the show in our next Question Blocked episode. Now, to talk a little bit more about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and why I think that it actually might end with Fighters Pass number two, well, it's very simple. I think that we are on a little bit of borrowed time in terms of the DLC of it all, right? It felt like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate wasn't really complete when it launched, right? It really felt like as the final character being Incineroar, yeah, that doesn't really make sense. It feels like we are in need, in need for a couple more characters. And when we got that first Fighter's Pass, or as we known it back then, just the Fighter's Pass, it felt like this might be a perfect bookend to all of those characters. Well, of course, now we know that isn't the case, and I think Byleth was already a little hint at what's to come, right? It didn't feel like that was the big ending character that everyone had hoped for, right? If that character, Byleth, was maybe a Rayman or a Crash, or maybe even a Ryu Hayabusa, it would totally feel like that would be the perfect ending, right? You would have Banjo-Kazooie in there, you would have Joker, which a lot of fans really, really love too, and, you know, a couple of fan favorite characters too, like Hero. So, yeah, it felt like that could have been the ender. With, with Violet there, it really felt like, okay, we're continuing this trend, we're even, you know, introducing first-party characters, and now with this new pass, we actually have two of those choices. Now, with Min Min in the mix, and also with Pyra and Mithra, that also are, yeah, they're essentially first-party characters. And it gets even more awesome if you think about the fact that Sakurai has been working so hard to deliver this game and all of the features aside from it, there is Stage Builder, there are all these amazing fun modes, and even World of Light as a whole is incredible with all the spirit battles, but it feels like this could definitely just be the end of what Ultimate is, and it could be carried into the future. There are also a lot of fans that are thinking and saying, Maybe this could actually spell the end of Ultimate, but the beginning of something new. Maybe the Smash Brothers franchise needs to evolve and grow a little bit before it can really perfectly change and become something new. So a lot of players, myself included, have actually thought that maybe the next Smash Brothers game will actually scale down a little bit, right? Maybe the idea here is not to build things out even more because you can't really get bigger than Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Now, to just say the obvious here, it isn't very simple to get all those characters that are in Ultimate back for the next game. 
all those different, you know, third party companies all need to, of course, be in on it. You know, they need to sign up and it costs a lot of money to do stuff like that. And maybe company values change and maybe years down the line, they don't want to be a part of Smash Brothers anymore or they're doing other crossovers or they have other contracts. I mean, generally, it is very difficult to get all of these IP in one place. And that's why Ultimate is so darn special. So do I think that it will happen for the next game? I think that they would do a really good job to make the roster a little bit smaller more compact, you know, and get it down to a couple of base roster mainstays that are, of course, the original 12 from Super Smash Brothers, you know, for the Nintendo 64, and, of course, a couple of the awesome Smash Brothers Melee newcomers that we had back then. And then, of course, you get into the territory of, are you choosing like characters like Ice Climbers to come back? Are you choosing clone characters like Dr. Mario to come back? And where's that line specifically? So I would be very interested to kind of find out where they think that that line is. Because, of course, there are a couple of characters that are not too popular with either tournament players and casual players. Maybe characters like, you know, Pikmin and Olimar. But, of course, the Pikmin franchise is huge in terms of Nintendo, right? It is a franchise that is alive and vibrant to this day. So even though maybe a character in Smash, like the Duck Hunt duo, might be a little bit more popular as a playable character than maybe Pikmin and Olimar, or, you know, take any of those other examples, I mean, you would still want to keep a character like that in there in favor of, you know, a retro kind of wink character like the Duck Hunt duo. So I think that there are a lot of choices that they need to make in terms of, is this the final game? Are we going to get more? And if the next game is coming, is it going to be downsized, right? So the danger here is that if this is in fact the final Super Smash Brothers game that Masahiro Sakurai directs, and we go out on a huge bang, right, those final two characters would be something incredibly cool, then I could only wonder, and I could only say, maybe this could be the big farewell for Sakurai, and maybe the Smash Brothers franchise has to wait a little bit before we get the next entry in the series, right? They really need to find the right director, maybe it is a director that has already done fighting games, or maybe it is a Nintendo first party studio, maybe the Mario studio that does all the great, you know, the Odyssey games and stuff like that. I would really think that they have very big shoes to fill with Masahiro Sakurai, who essentially is a freelancer, and he's working, you know, developing these games with different teams that he just finds together. I think that there is, you know, a very big possibility that it's just not going to happen anymore that we're not going to find a director quite like Masahiro Sakurai. There is, of course, a chance that Sakurai returns and that we get another Smash game with Sakurai at the helm. I would think that Mr. Sakurai himself would probably say, I will do this until the end, right? He wanted to quit after Melee, he wanted to quit after Brawl and after Smash for Wii U, but then with Ultimate, yeah, it really felt like, hmm. Maybe Masahiro Sakurai is in this for the long haul. So I'm generally really curious what you guys think of all this. You know, do you think there is going to be another Smash with Sakurai after Ultimate? Let me know down in the comments below. Of course, I would love to hear what you guys think of all this. And if you comment down below, that could actually be featured and read out loud in our next video. And today's comment question is, of course, do you think that there is another Sakurai Smash Brothers at the horizon? Well, and as for a previous comment question winner, our answer actually comes to us from our very own user, Knuckles Andreasen, saying, the James Bond was considered back in the day. Yes, but that was back in the day, after they lost to the license and can't make him join anymore. They open their eyes and they put on the rules, no real humans are close based on them, no movie licenses in Smash, etc. Roger Clark is based on Arthur Morgan, I think it was. So, big no. There is other issues with him being in Smash 2. Well, Dante, however, would be awesome. But at this point, I doubt he will be in. I'm sure it will be Crash and a new Pokemon rep. Well, yes, I think a Pokemon rep also completely makes sense, looking at what's ahead for Pokemon, with even Pokemon Legends, right? That's going to be super cool. So if there's a rep in there for that game, then I would be very, very excited to find out. So thank you guys so much for sending in all your comments. These are always a ton of fun to read through. And of course, a big shout out to our latest Patreon supporters and the super chats you guys send during live streams. You guys make block content possible. So 
If you want to have your stealth created in black hunted style or join me for a discussion or even have your own ideas become animations, go to patreon.com slash blocked content. There's a bunch of incredible rewards there and they're waiting for you. And remember, if you are not yet a member of the blocked content family yet, hit subscribe now. Smash that like button, ring the bell for notifications, and all the news and fun you care about will be delivered on the daily to you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you around the corner where there's always more blocked content. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.